I know, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Here, let me do this. <laughs> so apparently at video game companies, we uh, have builds, and yes. they require uh, download speed. <laughs> so that's apparently what that was, folks. Um, you know, it's funny. We, um, we talk about, you know, how fast things move, and uh, we have a build in the office for yeah. studio playtesting. So that's what happened, folks. That's what happened. Shiny they builds. Ate, ate up all the... Mega beats. I hear there's 10,000 new heroes, 4 billion maps, and 20 billion uh, Guardians I just got put that's in. That's right. So that's why I took yeah, out that's why all over. So, yeah. <laughs> so many internets. Can't confirm. Uh, cool. Yeah, so we were talking about coaches when we uh, got, uh, got unfortunately disconnected from it. And yeah, I was just going to say I love them. They're, uh, they're phenomenal people. Um, uh, what I was going to say is that... Um, the coaches aren't there just to uh, travel with us across the nation to help us at, um, oh, and really the globe. Like, we'll be working with a bunch of uh, community coaches in Germany. Boom. Uh, at Gamescom. Gamescom. Yeah. Um, we're going to be working with a bunch of coaches uh, at E3. Um, yeah, uh, really exciting stuff going on there. But these are the folks that we trust to keep us honest. Yeah. They play stuff early. They check out what we're doing and uh, provide us with, you know, unfettered unfiltered feedback um and yeah so the the good news about coaches is that um people who care about online communities and enjoy and want to be along um yeah. you, there's an opportunity for you so exactly and something that's always made me really happy is that it's not a cool kids club to the extent of no oh, god no these are huge nerds <laughs> yeah Wait, no, is that not, <laughs> no, <I'm like. laughs> um so if anybody's wondering like how do i become a coach and with the dropping of the nda more and more people are gonna uh be a part of it but this isn't an, a try once then leave away like no there's been concerns on reddit we're like oh you guys are very open with us right now but as soon as that NDA drops, you're gone. You're, you're away from us. But we, we've, we're committed to the long We're haul. committed, absolutely. And, we, I, you know, the, the thing that we know for sure as a studio is that, you know, we're going to make mistakes and there are things that we're going to do that will make people angry. But yeah. that's okay. We want to hear your thoughts. Just leave our moms out of it. <laughs> She's a sweet lady. She's a beautiful woman. Exactly. She's watching right now. Hi, Mom. <laughs> Almost Mother's Day. I know. Yeah, because that one would be just so proud. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so I do want to kind of leave you any fears. I know there was a question on Reddit. It's like, hey, you guys are very trans transparent right now but i've seen this before in other companies they're like you know they almost used they've been burned before they use the feedback they get from these people yeah. that are in I, that kind of company and i then, gotta tell you thor the that's one of the biggest concerns that i have is not so much that we are going to stop listening but that we're going to be inundated with people who have dealt with studios that haven't listened and so they're just going to go from zero to you know ass hattery in <laughs> two seconds without giving us an opportunity to go settle down like we're here we're listening yeah. um yeah so i'm 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 hoping that our community coach initiative and our goal in general to just build a phenomenal community gets uh becomes stronger than yeah. people's inclination to Dude. maybe get a little too angry uh or even become abusive um yeah that's yeah. that's the hope and it's unfortunate, like, just the way the internet is, let's just be honest, there are just bad people, they're bullies, there's everything like that. And but I, I, I see people who are the best people, I know people who are wonderful humans, but they get frustrated and angry, and then they hop on the internet and they vent, um, you know, I'm hoping that we don't create that kind of environment. I hope yeah. the environment we create is one where folks feel like they can have an outlet for their frustrations or their excitement or their hopes and dreams mm -hmm. and we're listening you know uh, frankly we're not going to always do the things that a community wants or demands um but the the promise is we'll explain why we'll we'll tell you what our thoughts are behind that and you know through thoughtful discourse and discussion yeah come to an agreement that might not be so much about us or so much about a community idea, but somewhere in the middle. Um, and I think that's really what it's all about. Indeed, indeed. And something that makes me really excited is that the coaches are almost our first line of defense. Like we choose these coaches based on who they are as a person and the fact that they are just such a good rep representative for like Motiga values. And yeah. I, it's just from experience, I've seen so many great coaches just be so many different things there. But they, they inform our values as well. Um, you know, we had no, uh, working with some folks who are, um, you know, who came to PAX South and PAX East, um, these people have become 
family you know we, really we know are. them we we know what they're up to right? we, you know and <laughs> and, uh, and the good news is we want more of them yeah we want more coaches we want more people to be involved with what we're trying to accomplish indeed 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 and like i said guys it's not a you know closed off gate of like oh you're not a coach get away from us no that's that's not what this is about this this initiative that we're having uh is about growing our family it really is it is yeah it's yeah. about you know everyone can be involved yeah it's like we're having a good time and we want you to be here too but i <laughs> lot of <laughs> we'll feed the coaches to the angry horde first. <laughs> you crack the code. <laughs> I'm going to come and find you. <laughs> I know where you live. Um, not completely expendable. Just half of you. <laughs> no. <laughs> we tease. We tease. Yeah. We tease because we love you. We have fun. Yeah. So let's talk about PAX. Woo. And let's talk about just our plans in general for PAX? our events. PAX? All of our plans. I mean, mm. I think E3 is going to be our most recent one coming up. Well, E3 is coming up. Um, we are going to be doing some really fun stuff there. Uh, oh, yeah. A lot of great announcements and things. I don't want to get too much into it, but we are there with our phenomenal partner, Microsoft, who's been really, really great to work with. Um, we're, we're stoked to share lots of great news and uh, plans and all kinds of good stuff. Uh, we're going to be on the show floor. We're going to be doing... Um, uh, tons of interviews. Um, the exciting thing as well is that we're, we are uh, embracing sort of the global community as well. So yeah. we're going to be talking to uh, friends across the globe about, uh, you know, gigantic world domination. Pretty much. Uh, oh, man. We, so David, you was talking about a little bit about, uh, you know, expanding into the uh, you know, other hemisphere. You're talking about maybe yeah. Korea, China, you know, getting we're some. We're talking about oh, it. Like yeah. It, you like know, we, it, we definitely, uh, we know that there's a lot of interest, uh, but our, our real, our next big focus is going to be. Uh, Europe. Oh yeah. Um, oh, yeah. We we love our Europeans, and they have been uh, super super supportive of us. So really um, you know, in the future, maybe you might see some new faces on the community team that might speak, you know, German or French or Spanish or Ooh, yeah. That so, would be fun. That would yeah. be fun. And I know we talked a little bit about this at PAX East, but um, I feel like the EU community as a whole in the gaming industry has really gotten the short end of the stick a lot, and it makes me really yeah. mad as a gamer and a community person. Um, it's almost like a back thought, like for some reason like oh america is the end all be all the gaming community and it's not it's really not if without without the german like the eu community rather uh for me i know i wouldn't be here where i'm sitting because they're just absolutely fantastic people so yeah yeah well the, they are they we've got a lot of uh community coaches that are uh that are in europe and um we've had some folks who have just really made uh, an indelible in a good way indelible impression on on the way that we you know coordinate our events and the things that we do um but you know gigantic could is a global community we want right. people to you know connect I'm no excited. matter where you are um so our our goal is to is to really make sure that we're taking care of our friends uh in europe gotcha. in a big way gotcha 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 Whew, so we got e3 on the list we got gamescom oh uh, yeah oh how do, how do you think the timeline is going are you excited i'm really excited it's sort of the calm before the storm really right is. now um really the thing I'm, I'm really excited about are some of the things that we'll be able to show off in the new builds that we'll be showing that we'll be uh playing at uh, e3 and uh gamescom uh you know pax prime is in our it's in our backyard it is it's our backyard. home um and we're we've got big big plans um oh, man. yeah we're really really excited about it uh i don't want to give too much away but you know that you know, Pax Prime is kind of in the fall of the year. It's it is. sort of towards the latter part of the year, and that's kind of a big deal for us. Maybe even a gigantic deal. Right. So that's a whole. If I can be the puns, so the puns, bold. and the hints. I love it. I love it. Love it. Love it. Yeah, guys. I do want to say this is the combo for the storm. This is you yeah. know we're growing our team, expanding our team, and we're getting those building blocks in place. This is what the stream is all about. Yeah. We wanted to contact you. I've had a month and a half to prepare. Um, we're ramping up. It's yes. It's never go back in production value. Always go forward. Well, talk me talk to me a little bit about what your plans are for streaming. Oh man. Now <laughs> the roles have been reversed. Good sir. <laughs> Um, so, uh, you brought me on um, because you liked what the kind of person what I am. And no, I, no, I don't like you at all. <laughs> there we have it. I'm done. Shut the stream off. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, 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 I do. I oh, do. thank you. I, we all love you. Oh, uh, and my vision kind of corresponded with yours in the fact that commute. Oh, here we go. <laughs> Wait, hold on. <laughs> Whiskey break. One go second. On, please do continue. <laughs> so, to me, it was always my um, my dream and my vision to work in the game industry. Uh, However, my life goals kind of didn't match with that. I was going through college, and I was part of a different community, and that community, unfortunately, had this game shut down. Rest in peace forever. Yeah, um, uh, we were all heartbroken about that. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, but out of the ashes of something that tragic came this opportunity at Motiga, and 
our interaction kind of led to where I am now. And my goal for this is to really show the heart and soul of Motiga. Um, it's my vision that uh, to grow a connection with you guys, the audience, to make it so you know who we are as a person, who, yeah. who we are as a company. Yeah. Um, that's going to entail a lot of different things, but um, we're going to be ramping up to a three-day-a-week stream. Uh, so we Aggressive. Are gonna, oh, aggressive. I like it. Uh, we're going to have a Wednesday show all about the community where we play games with you guys, where we highlight our YouTubers like J.K. Kennedy, Bazile, where we highlight uh, our fan art. Our that wasn't to Bazile, by the way. You said Bazile, and I went <laughs> like that. <laughs> uh, that. No, this is really strong, <laughs> and this is what I'm saying. But no, we love you. Blizz crud. And we're going to be we're gonna be highlighting everybody and our, our fans like, like GG Unleashed, Clashpoint, Rematch, GG. Uh, we have so many great community things out there and that's what our Wednesday show is going to be all about. Nice. Whether it's just like sitting down and just hanging out with you guys, playing with you guys, playing games against you guys, smashing you guys because we're better than you. No. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Whoa! Dropping the hammer. It has been my experience that uh, <laughs> the gaming communities generally get way better than the developers. So I would, uh, I I would fight with two of them now. No, I'm just kidding. You guys are going to roll us. <laughs> but no, I tease. <laughs> so that's what our Wednesday is going to show. It's going to be all about our Monday show is where we're going to turn on the stream and talk about where we are as a company and our developmental focus. Anything between like our patch notes, our yeah, our maybe you know we have a we're working on a new skin. Like let's show that off. Let's get you yeah. guys excited about it. Let's talk about what we're doing as a studio. Yeah, we're going to make mistakes. We're going to make our we're going to have where we trip up, but that's okay. We're not afraid to show us our crazy side. Obviously, Congo lines and you know, woo, Emily. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and so we're not afraid to show you guys our crazy side. But we also want to get want to want you guys to see us as a company and you know get really to know us and so that's well, what yeah and then and to be a part of what we're going to talk about help right. us help us plan the things that people want to you know indeed. know about yeah indeed 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 so cool. monday is going to be all about what we're doing and then friday friday is very special to me because that's where we highlight our developers uh getting to know you guys you guys are kind, of, kind of like my family and we have some of the best developers here and i say that lovingly and biasly but anything with our artists maybe uh we have we just hired high res k who's now mo kate and she's working on levels and she's just yeah such a, yeah she's such why don't we set up a camera behind her and have her talk about what she's doing we we have to we yeah. like, that just has to happen yep. so yep. she's gonna give us insight about the industry and a, maybe a qa position you know we have eric here he's you know banging on our builds <laughs> yeah. that, that's gonna be our stream title banging on the build with eric okay. uh, so you know qa is oftentimes a way to get into the industry well let's get eric on here talk about you know what was his path that led up into the industry let's have him play games with our community yeah yeah and um and then we can switch gears and have gorm or you know maybe our artists on stream and do some fan favorites let's talk about you know having you know the fans be like hey you know draw this shenanigans and he'll sit down and kind of talk with chad interact with them and yep. um and it'll be really fun it'll be a way to show our our really our inner side our hearts and stuff like that and getting to know our developers on a personal level i'm really yep, excited absolutely well i'm excited about it we're really pleased that you're here to do all this stuff and streaming is a really important part of getting the message out yeah. um not all of us have a, a face for video but um you know we're it's important to us that you get to see what's going on inside of the studio and frankly you know when uh when we first met thor i don't know if everyone knows the story but um i, I like to tell it uh he sent a, a video just to us uh sent us a link um saying you know a very heartfelt plea not for a job but for can we, do we have a place for these passionate gamers who have uh, lost this, you know, place that yeah. they call their own? And it, it really resonated with me personally because I think uh, online communities are a beautiful thing and we're really trying to, your, your message just kind of hit all the notes that yeah. we're trying to, uh, that we're trying to achieve here and uh, we were super proud to, um, to connect with you and brought you out to PAX South, was it PAX South? Uh, Pack South, yeah, first Pack South. Uh, yeah, we did did some streaming esque kind of stuff. Yeah, um, but you you know you were just crazy enough, but not so crazy. Yeah. Uh, so we're really pleased that you're here, dude. Um, I'm very very happy. I'm excited. And uh, to answer a question in chat, when are we going to be doing these uh, streams stuff like that? As it stands right now, we are getting the building blocks. Uh, I am committing to once a week stream. Uh, for us to do this here, uh, I, we're going to be shooting for Mondays. Uh, we're going to have more information, and we'll. Go talk about it on our reddit our twitter our facebook uh right now we're committing to one day a week streams at the very most right now because yep. you know there is a lot of things that go we on. gotta build it we gotta build it up we, we do we yeah. do we do we do and then i'm gonna do it right and man i gotta tell you thor just i i'm just like hey thor throw a camera on your deal and just talk to it and he's like i don't want to do that i want to <laughs> what do you stuff. think <laughs> I'm just like, just sit at your desk and talk about some stuff. And he's like, I don't like that idea. <laughs> oh, man. Um, oh, gosh, that's just great. Uh, yeah. yeah, it's yeah. true, though. I mean, you're a stickler for, pro 
professionalism. And I I'm really like, is. what is that? Because <laughs> I get drunk on a live stream. Yeah, yeah right. Well, we'll make sure not to uh, have the camera on my deal too often, but we will have a really great professional stream. And on we're his gonna deal. Uh, that's what you said. What? You were like, we'll put the camera on his deal. Oh, I said that? Oh, yeah. You did. I meant his face deal. <laughs> I meant on his monitor. <laughs> that doesn't <matter. laughs> All right, weird. we're having some fun. No. Getting weird. No, never. Um, <laughs> Late. Cool. Awesome. Uh, uh, there are a couple questions, but I do you have any other questions for me? Um, yeah, I have one more. <laughs> yes, I like that. <laughs> All right, I'm scared. I'm really hungry. Uh, we should yeah. go. To, we should go. To, no, I'm kidding. Yeah, uh, Little John's. Yeah, I know, right? Oh man, we have we have to share a love for Little John's. It's a little pub. Oh my gosh, it's just absolutely fantastic. Yeah, it's kind of a greasy spoon. It's kind of nice. It has a little bar in the back. Yeah, and, yeah, 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 yeah. You um, know, Emma Weather loves a bar. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, go on. Except in Boston. <laughs> whoop, 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 whoop. Uh, anyways, anyways, let's let's take a couple questions from chat. Just a couple of questions because you are the community man. I feel like we can answer a couple of those. Yeah. Oh, Lord Nuggets. Oh, we're gonna get to the Lord Nuggets. Oh, That's Lord next. Nuggets are coming. Oh, it's oh man. We have... I don't know if they're. It's not really Lord Nuggets. Lord Logs. Lord Logs. <laughs> You have a way with words, Troy. That is just eloquent and beautiful. I'm a time. poet. <laughs> um, where is the Motiga Bear? Don't know where the Motiga Bear is. The, How, where is the Motiga give, Bear? Emily, give me the Motiga Bear. About, the, give me the, there are you talking is. about Joe Pickup? <laughs> I think Joe Pickup is the Motiga Bear. Titus Arm, why is it gone? We'll get into that. All right, story, Baz, a uh, really good question about unicorns. Um, I do not <laughs> love unicorns. Uh, unicorns were given to me <laughs> once, and then now they keep coming, and the, it's just a, a flood of unicorns. Um, they just keep uh, coming. And I ask them to stop, and then keep coming. Yeah, yeah. We actually had a good picture of us together today with. Uh, oh, we did on the Facebook. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Somebody, yes. Uh, somebody posted a picture with a unicorn. A Thor, a little cartoon <laughs> Thor carrying a little, a big. Yeah. Cartoon unicorn. Absolutely great. Yeah. Um. You know, uh, this is good. I'm gonna actually. Unicorns or pot pie? I gotta say, unicorns in pot pie. <laughs> um. Uh, hey, so someone asked about what other community initiatives can we expect from the team. Um, we're, so I've officially taken over the coaches program. Uh, as I have uh, inherited new responsibilities uh, with the team, I've become farther and farther away from the community, and it yeah. kills me a little inside because um, working with online communities is what keeps me alive. Yeah. Um, keeps me young and supple. Uh, anyway, the, so we'll be we'll be amplifying our community coach uh, program. Uh, we're also looking at. Uh, for me, I think it's important that the community is a big part of what happens in the on the front page of the website and in other areas. Yeah. Uh, so we're uh, amplifying the gigantic live stuff, working with um, our uh, uh, PR uh, midget. Um, oh, that's rude. PR small person. Um, Chris Toomey, uh, he is going to be working on some, what we're calling Gigantic Live. Uh, it will be where we take over a local bar or pub. We'll That's set up fun. 10 machines. People will be able to play. Yeah. We'll buy you a couple of drinks unless we're in Boston. Yeah. And then we will um, actually take that regional. So the idea behind it is that we'll work with our community coaches and a staff person from Otiga to go places that we can't go because we can't be everywhere but yeah. we can have people that know our values and understand our game and yeah. want to make new friends and so what we'll do is send them 10 machines and let them set up an event um and uh kind of work that out nice i like that and i like the idea of going places and hanging out going to a bar playing some gameplay and just just hanging out with the community that's really what it's that's all really about. what it's all about honestly yeah. it's just this game is fun the community team is fun the community really is. is fun that's what it's all about and getting to know the developers too that's gonna be so yes. fun yes absolutely so fun awesome 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 um there's been a couple questions uh like so somebody asked about the esports scene guys we're gonna make it grassroots uh we're never force anything on you guys yeah uh the, yeah the idea is that so here's my my take on this and and uh and this is both, you know, M.O. Huggles, uh, who is really going to be point on our uh, competitive scene. We're going to start small and we're going to start by supporting people. You know, there's the High School Star League. There's a bunch of really great organizations. Community, uh, events like Warpath Gaming. Clash oh, Warpath, Clashpoint. Yeah. Uh, you know, those, those people are building something pretty phenomenal. And we want to support that as a community endeavor. Um, I, there's a there's a 
bit of hubris and challenge when we're just like, oh, we are esports. Um, actually, we are fun, and if people feel like there's some esport potential and quality, then we're going to do that. Um, yeah, so that's how that's going to work. Good. Uh, we'll, we'll invest in our community uh, as it relates to uh, esports kinds of things yeah. and uh, and grow it from there. I, I actually, esports. I'd rather just say competitive fun, yeah. and then we'll see what happens. Exactly, exactly. Grassroots events. We don't want to force anything on you guys. No, and we want people to be able to... It's about community interest. It's not about us jamming an idea down your throat. Yeah. Uh, will there be invite uh, codes for alpha testers? Those are... Oh, that's a great question. We're always in the talks about what's going to be uh, in the deal yep. for uh, open beta, closed beta, <laughs> your beta, my beta, his beta, everyone's beta. Everybody's <laughs> beta. <laughs> yeah. Um, so there's a good question about streaming as, as far as timelines and uh, making YouTube and streaming. And is that... Do you think, personally, is that going to be closed beta, open beta? Do you think it's going to be sooner rather than later? Or, you it's know... It's going to be sooner rather than later. Nice, nice, nice. And I know that's very vague, guys, but just trust us. Just have a little bit more faith in us. We're going to be giving you guys timelines. We're going to be giving you dates and stuff like that. Um, we don't want to rush into anything. I feel like as a gamer, I would rather have something that's ready than just a pile of no-no. And just because um, we want to give you the best experience possible. And that kind of ties back into our NDA talk. But uh, yep. when it's ready, it's ready. But however, you guys will be our front line. We do realize the importance of streamers and YouTubers. You guys are great. You guys want to you know, make content for us. And we totally appreciate that. Yeah. Um, part of the reason... Part of the thing I'm doing is having a streamer summit. You know, I'll be more vocal about that in the coming months, and it's gonna be great. It's gonna be exciting, and uh, hope that answers the question a little bit. I don't know. Yeah. Someone was asking what brand glasses these were. Oh, <laughs> nice. Um, yeah. So uh, one of the other community issues I want to talk about, and I know people have asked, uh, API stuff. Um, so recently we post on. Um, uh, sorry, people are writing stuff that's making me laugh. Uh, <laughs> we posted on Reddit um, a call for people who were interested in talking a little bit more about API stuff. Uh, the only reason we haven't done it quite yet is because there's a lot of things in the pipeline, and I do not want to engage in that discussion until our uh, engineers are ready to sit down and talk with you. So the idea is if you have, uh, if you sent me a message on Reddit and you said you wanted to be involved in the API discussion, you're on uh, an email list and I'll actually send out a note today just saying, hey folks, don't be scared. I know you're interested. If you didn't uh, send me a note and you're interested in hearing more about how we plan to share data, um, uh, better said, how we plan to work with community to make sure that we're sharing the right data in the right way um, and being as you know open and and uh, and as useful as possible to the people who want to build tools around that kind of information. Send me a note on Reddit with your email address uh, m o underscore ether a e t h e r. Scoot, Scoot closer, closer to shore. Oh, it's focusing. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. HR. <laughs> oh, <laughs> out of everything we deal with. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All the harassment I gave you guys. Yeah. Oh, I know, right? Sorry. We want to get the closer focus. I got you. Yeah. Uh, can Thor hold David in one bicep and Troy in the other and hoist them off the ground? Yeah, that would... Um... Well, given that my entire body is one of your... Ham hocks here. What do you call ham, those? Ham hocks. <laughs> what is a ham hock? I've never even heard that part of my life. Um, that that remains to be seen. I do want to kind of put. Uh, there's so lucky. Paulo said, "Thor, you said trust us." And uh, coming from other communities, especially ones that have been grounded into dirt, uh, that's asking a lot. And we understand that. We do. I the reason. If there's any proof in the pudding, um, coaches initiative. Um, that hasn't been done really well in the industry before, and we've done that. Uh, adding me, and I'm not trying to toot my own horn, but they wouldn't have hired me unless they were prepared to show that level of transparency. Hold us accountable, guys. If we say we're going to do something, tell us. Let us know. Tweet at us. Um, you're right. It, we are asking a lot of you, and that relationship that we're building you starts now. But it, here's the deal. Um, trust us, but question indeed. us. Um, uh, a thoughtful dialogue about issues that you care about related to our game, related to experiences that you've had in other communities, and how you'd like to see us do things differently. Um, we're not asking you to just sit and wait and trust that we're going to figure stuff out. We're asking you to trust that we care about your opinion and your thoughts. So think about the things that are important to you as it relates to the kind of business we're in, um, the business of making games. Uh, I'm in the business of building online communities. Tell us what you expect and what you, and what you need, and, uh, and we will deliver to the best of our ability, or we'll tell you why not. 
indeed, 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 indeed. And that's a journey, guys. Uh, we're gonna make mistakes. We're gonna uh, stumble. Absolutely, we're gonna absolutely. Yeah, but uh, it's a journey, and we're gonna work on building that trust yeah. uh, a day at a time. And great. Cool. Great, Any great. other questions? Um, not that I quite see. We'll have some more uh, questions a little bit later on, guys. But I think. Um, uh, when Character model sheets. When will we release them? That's a good question. Character model sheets. That's a good question for another time. We'll, uh, we'll actually. It is a good question for another time because I don't know what the hell they're talking about, <laughs> or I can't remember what they're talking about. Yeah. I'm getting old and drunk. Uh oh, we, we've had it. We've had a great time. We had a great time. Well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much uh, for tuning in. We're not done quite yet, but this does draw a close to Troy. Wait, I'm, no, wait. I'm hanging out. For the rest. No, we're I'm done? We're done. <laughs> hey, folks, uh, thank you so much. Um, Thor, my friend, hey. so glad you're here. Thank you for making us do this, no and worries, uh, I hope everyone really enjoys your hard work and uh, look forward to the, to the good things to come. I appreciate it. Awesome. Guys, that is Head of Communications, the man, the myth, the legend, Troy Hewitt. Bye. You know, so many great things coming down the pipeline thank you so much again troy yeah. all right oh my gosh wait is the, that is troy that is the man himself all right all right ladies and gentlemen oh oh man so yeah we're not done yet don't worry guys we got uh, a little bit more planned let's put that right there oh that has been fun that uh kind of wraps up our interviews of the day but I promise a little lore, and you guys are going to get it. Uh, thank you guys so much for hanging out with us. I appreciate it. Um, this is our first step into a larger journey, and it starts, you know, it's been actually starting for a while, but this is where my journey with you guys begins. So uh, I promise you guys, Laura, we're going to get into it. We're going to get David Noonan. David Noonan is that man right there. Um, if our intern stops typing on his uh, laptop and turns around and starts working, it, we're going to be good. There he is. <laughs> I tease, I tease, I tease. But um, anyways, guys. Uh, let's see if we can get David Noonan he up here, and let's talk a little bit about lore. Let's do it, bud. All right. Lore logs. Lore logs. Uh-oh. He... writer. What do you think? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. Can, can I get this man a drink? <laughs> is, is, is that happening? Oh, no. Uh-oh. Okay. I, I think it is happening. Oh, man. Here we go. I think we need another glass, though. Uh, what would you use the glass for? For the alcohol. <laughs> I don't get it. The glass? Okay, he just wants to use the bottle. <laughs> Where I think I think. As I uh, before, I'm a red. Oh, oh, oh no! Oh, wow, that, that's a big one. Look, look at that. Oh. And oh. so the hero did the thing in the. Room. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, I we may save that for another time. We we gotta get it down to business. No, among things I do read are labels. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Oh gosh. Oh now 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 M O Kaboom has it. <laughs> this is oh no oh no. So. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Doing good. <laughs> so, guys, back when I was a community member, um, you know, lore has always been really important to me and my community and what I brought over. And I, I made eye contact with David, and we both <laughs> looked at each other, and we were just like, yes. Uh, and uh, because lore is super important to me, and I know it's super important to a lot of people out there. And what I'm going to do today, guys, is not necessarily reveal a lot of lore. Uh, quite frankly, we're going to show you guys what it takes for a studio to make the building blocks of a game world and I have to repeat this over and over and over again uh, what I'm gonna show you today guys isn't laid in stone this is merely work in progress this is merely characterization this is merely showing you something what if what could and what is the building blocks what are the insight what is what goes on through a you know somebody like your mind what a character artist mind and what does it take to make a game atmosphere exactly when when you have I think as a writer it really is any kind of creative person when you have a good idea on Thursday it often just means you're gonna have a great idea on Friday so that's one of the reasons why everything that we're gonna show is a work in progress I need to be closer oh uh, okay there we go nailed it all right is that better okay sweet okay all right so, so let's dig in yeah let's do it <laughs> <laughs> uh, so first of all who are you and what is your position at Motiga? Uh, my name's David Noonan I'm the uh, senior writer here at Motiga awesome. and so that means I'm responsible for the story in game, and then a lot of the writing outside of the game, a lot of the instructional stuff, even some of the marketing stuff. Uh, you know, if it's got consonants and vowels, I like to get my fingers in it at least a little bit. <laughs> nice, 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 nice. So, you know, Toomey, let's hit that first lore slide and give me a thumbs up when we're on it, bud. 
cool. Oh, so uh, right now the chat is looking at five flags and uh, the five houses. So we, I don't know if we've ever confirmed this before, but there is five houses in our game. Right. There are five great houses that essentially rule the world of Gigantic. And then below that, there are a constellation of lesser houses that are all striving to become one of the big five. And the big five uh, clearly don't want that to happen. But the big five are mostly interested in their rivalries with each other. Yes, 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 yes. And guys, remember, everything is a work in progress. What you see on those flags is not final. It is merely a work of progress. The artists and developers in a game company all right put something down and be like, there's an idea. Where do we go with it? And those flags that I just showed you, they're not final. I can't tell. keep telling you those enough, but uh, there it is. There We have three houses confirmed and five total. Yeah, it, I think it's great that we're starting by showing some art because a lot of the lore and a lot of the world building here at Motiga starts with art. It starts with concept art from Vinod, from, from everybody, really. Yes. And uh, And I think that is, as a writer, one of the greatest things in the world. It's really great when they come over to me and it's like, Dave, we've got this. Can you come up with a story? I mean, that is way better than the reverse, right? Where I come up with a story and then I go over and say, hey, Devin, hey, Bernard, can you guys draw this? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's, it's much more fun to get a picture to start with. And so more so than any other studio I've ever worked, uh, Motiga is a very art-driven place creatively. And so a lot of our ideas about world building absolutely start with the art. House of Zoidberg confirmed. <laughs> That's great. That's great. Um, so these these houses and these flags, again, I can't say it enough. They're not final representations. So people that are making the game world, and this is super important, they get an idea, they write it down, and they explore it. And it's these building blocks that really make a game world. Other game companies, and we'll not name them, uh, when they make a game and they make a game world rich in lore rich in history rich in world building um they take a lot of different aspects um let's take you know smite's a great example they have things that they can reach back and be like oh you know there's a god and he has history he has an idea there's stuff that like go into that and then let's take another example the legends where they made lore and uh and for better or worse they're like you know what? we're gonna start over and completely like, just flip the table and like yep whatever we're gonna start over and both great examples both great you know pros and cons um so Toomey is uh, on, off camera yelling at me and making fun of me. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, but going forward, we want to do this very smartly. We want to have the great basics and the developers everywhere at Motiga are making conscious decisions on what goes into um, the lore. So let's uh, head over to uh, slide two. By the way, the house, the uh, city is called the City of Empyrean. Yeah. City of Empyrean, which is interesting because you can kind of take away from that. There's a word in Empyrean Empire. So uh, again, little 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 bits of nuggets. I do love my Greco Roman Greco Roman word roots. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yep, 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 yep. Great, 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 great. Um, anyways, so on the second slide, uh, what we're about to see, I'll see it on his in a second. I kind of want to talk a little bit about. Ooh, hold on. I need to get confirmation. It's the right slide. One second, guys. Hold on with us. It's okay. You're fine. I just want to make sure it's the right slide. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, I like the I like the artwork. <sighs> Wait, oh yeah, we completely I completely messed up that slide. <laughs> it's supposed, so Devedra is supposed to have the snake and Orion is supposed to have the sun. Can't confirm on stream. That's my bad, and that's what happens when I make it the last second. Anyways, we're on to the next slide. Can't can't complain. Love it. All right, uh, Team Squid calling it now. Oh my gosh, we're gonna run with it. Uh, all right, so. Great. I actually, this is a slide I absolutely freaking love. So if you can see off to my left-hand side, there it is. Um, so when you're making a world and you make the world that uh, people get to play in, there's so many different aspects and scenarios that go into it. Uh, but something that I think is very, very important is how would you feel walking down the streets of the universe that they're in? Right. Um, what What is the culture? What is the architect? What is the, you know, what is just the generic style of you play? Um, You've been in the game industry quite a bit. Like, what do you feel uh, about that? Well, I think for Gigantic, the that overall feel is very cosmopolitan, but also kind of fractured. It's one of the things that's a pet peeve of mine when when you're looking at any sort of fictional world is if it feels like a monoculture where all the architecture has one look to it, and you know, and that same goes for the natural world. If it's a whole planet that's one big forest, it's when we look at the actual one planet that most of us know, Earth, it's got 
thousands of cultures and Indeed. thousands of climates and it's so rich and so varied and it's just a huge mosaic of all these crazy chunks stuck together that's one of the things that i'm keen to explore with gigantic is that same sense of difference that you know part that land a can be next to land b and they're totally different in that difference that border zone between them that's where the magic really happens indeed with five culture five uh houses being in a game that's five different cultures and moti gets smart because they want every single house to feel different from each other mm -hmm. they do and how they feel different how we expand that idea of each house is indifferent has their own identity has their own soul that's what we're working on now you know that's what they're really hammering out they want to make sure every house feels different from each other they want to have that identity that culture they, like if you saw them walking down the street in a marketplace be like oh they're from this house yeah. and stuff like that and this game has been in production for about four years now and you know it's so exciting to see everybody all the final pieces and pieces getting placed and you know taking them out taking them back in throwing out you know that's a really good idea that's a really bad idea and it's so great to see this world building process and i absolutely love it and something that i kind of want to talk about is what why do we know something in a game world or why do we know something in a you know in a story um so there's a story coming out there like with taito and losing his arm um can you uh Rian, talk about that a little bit a little yeah sure because uh, that's the one everybody knows already you want to talk about uh, it taito is i think one of the most fascinating one of the most fascinating heroes in gigantic of the ones uh, we've shown so far because taito is intentionally a sword wielder of mystery. Taito, nobody's sure about very much about Taito, but Taito has an almost folkloric quality in that all, in the absence of actual information, actual definite, explicit, we know this about Taito, all sorts of folklore has sprung up. There's a common folktale about how Fang is Taito's, let me think, left arm. And Fang can do all of the things. Fang is literally the southpaw for Taito. Is that true? Certainly, if I think about it, at least three of the five houses believe so. Uh, and it's that sort of uh, it's that sort of playing with narration. Who's telling you the information that you know about the world of Gigantic? That's something I'm really keen to do a lot with because. As with any really great story, it often tells you as much about the storyteller as it does about the story. Indeed, and my thing is, so everybody like that I know was talking about the story of Taito, what happened to his arm, and like what Fang came into with the you know the story of the forest. And I'm like, well, how do we know this? Like, did did Taito get really drunk at a bar and start telling all his friends at the bar, like, look, look what happened to me, like, look how it, like, or did we just stand on a corner, somebody from you know Motika Studio get transferred in there and be like, hear ye, hear ye, Taito loses his arm. Like, it is such a good question to ask too, because like, how is the community going to get that information and Really, it's, to me, it's really exciting. It's the, we're going to deliver the lore, the world building of the game in small, really bite-sized chunks. I, I hope that we never do really long, laborious, encyclopedia-style entries on Taito, for example, because I think that would take away a little bit of Taito's magic. Instead, what we'll do is we're going to very frequently throughout the game, pervasively, provide small nuggets of information, and it'll it's kind of on the community and kind of on all fans of Gigantic to piece those together and figure out, again, it's a little bit like a mosaic. You're kind of figuring out the big picture from all the small pieces put Indeed. together. And I, I imagine that there will be wikis and all websites and all sorts of things for people trying to figure out all the hidden secrets of Gigantic. And believe me, I'm inserting a million of them. That's... So, and I, so I, I, you know, the treasure hunting will be rewarded. But uh, it's... Uh, it's a fascinating way because it's a fascinating way to tell a story because that's how actual history works. Indeed. It, it, actual history was told by actual narrators, many of whom had ulterior motives and, and many agendas. of who are on the winning side. You know? yeah, exactly. Oh man, that's great. That is absolutely great. Uh, piggybacking on that idea, um, so there is our game is full of strife. Uh, when you get down to it, people are you know. Uh, warring and so what may be true from a certain point of view much like Star Wars like from a certain point of <laughs> exactly. view um, you really we're, you guys are really actively trying to put that emphasis on like you know what maybe you know Charnock like you know he's a dragon kin-esque creature what 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 creature is that like and you know Charnock is obviously be like I'm the best I'm the best of the fire people and but um, what I think in, is 
amazing and really great. Uh, and again, people are in the chat and be like, oh, this is now canon, this is now. But what if in a scenario that we found Roland's journey and he had descriptive like idea of what kind of creature that is? And that's great because it gives you kind of character of what is Roland, how he approaches the situation, and then it tells a little bit about Charnock. Is it true? Is it fact? Is he just, like, you know, have the scientists even know what kind of creature he is, much like Zenobia? And to me, that's what really gets me excited because you're not just saying, this is how it is, like it and write a big biography on it. It's not. It's, that's not what it is. And that's not what you guys are trying to approach the situation from. You guys are having a bunch of, like you said, mosaic. And it's up to you guys, the community, to find stuff in game, out of game, and other different pockets, other different lore, and put it together. And that really gets me excited. Yeah. It's. I was writing some Charnock lore just uh, before we got on the stream here. And uh, suffice it to say that Roland has a very different sense of who Charnock is than Charnock's parents have. <laughs> you know, and you know, come, as I think about it, that's true of my friends and my parents, too, as yeah. I think about it a little more. So there's a verisimilitude there that's kind of nice. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Uh, help, let's hit that next slide and talk a little bit about <gasps> what goes into seeing people and the perception of people and all of the goodness there. So there is an 18-second delay, and I want to kind of show him what the, uh, the next slide is going to be. Is the 18-second delay in case we just start dropping F-bombs? Uh, it could be. <laughs> <laughs> shut it down! Shut it down! So uh, if I start swearing, I need to do so for at least 19 seconds. Nice, Got it. Okay, nice, I understand. Nice, 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 nice. Uh, so again, guys, all the artwork that I'm going to show you guys is not any indicative of the final product. I do not want to get that out there because I know somebody's going to be like, oh, there it is. That's it. Ship it. And that's not what this is about. I'm merely showing you the building blocks of what it creates to make a game world. And uh, so the next slide I'm about to show you, we'll talk a little bit about that. Um, in a sense, when I see it on the left side, um, that armor. <gasps> uh, okay. I love how Don has even more <laughs> delay than anybody else on our stream. Hold on, we'll see you in one second. I love it. Well, that's great. That just means... <laughs> there it is. Okay. The stream oh. can go to, like, Europe and stuff before it gets over to I wanna, five feet from me. <laughs> I want to I wanna highlight something. I got the right flag for this one. I got the yeah. right... I, I, did, I did something right. That's what happens when I do everything in the last second. So... Um, these, this concept art that I'm showing you guys down on stream, it says Orion. Um, and what I really want to kind of harp on, when you say you have a great relationship with the artists, mm -hmm. and you guys feed off of each other, and what I love to see when I look at this slide is, what would you see when you walk down the street? Like, mm -hmm. what do they look like? What is the common man, common person? You have a warrior on the stream, you have somebody that looks like a merchant, and um, it really kind of speaks to volumes about what who is that culture? Right. And well, uh, for starters, with uh, House Orion, anybody in House Orion would say, well, I'd be happy to tell you about what the common House Orion person is. Now, I myself am not a common House Orion man. <laughs> None of us are truly common. <laughs> but uh, but overall, I mean, it, it, overall, what you're seeing there is, for starters, I mean, even aside from the clothing detail that you're seeing, the... Uh, there's a palette there, and uh, the artists are frankly better than I am in sort of the emotional meaning of color. But they, you mm -hmm. know, <laughs> those colors are very carefully chosen. And uh, and then beyond that, it's we want to evoke some real world cultures without copying real world cultures. Uh, that's one of the things that drives me crazy in any kind of fantasy MMO. Is like, oh, the dwarves are Scottish, and they're you know, Scottish. <laughs> McGregor. <laughs> you know, it's like, like all the all the dwarves are either Scottish or German, right? And yeah. it's. And that's great. I, I suppose it's useful because you immediately have a bunch of associations that you can tie to things. But yeah. our world is a much more magical place, and we really want to foster more of a sense of exploration. So there's, you know, if we do our jobs right, you won't find a lot of straight line real world analogs. And so when I see the clothing here, I, it's to me, I, I can see little things that are a little bit Fertile Crescent y and the. But there's a lot of other things going on there. And I really like that mixing things up. And then our artists just kind of go crazy every once in a while and, and come up with something that, as far as I can tell, has no real roots in you know, planet Earth at all. Indeed, indeed. And again, the building blocks of the skies is they have an idea in their head. They work with you. They put their first, like, go ahead. Like, okay, this is the first concept. And they say, does it look different enough? Can you dictate oh this house looks like this this house looks like that and uh it's great it really is it's like you said there's so many real world connections that people make as a fantasy like you mm -hmm. meant we uh mentioned with the dwarves and right. i love it that you know gigantic is going to be its own world mm -hmm. it, it it will you know unfortunately you know garner stuff from other you know cultures and stuff like that but 
we're doing something special here. Yeah. We're doing it from the ground up. So let's hit that next slide. Let's hit that next slide. <laughs> I'm excited. Oh, oh, this is gonna be a good one. <laughs> somebody's like, somebody's like, trip looks like from Orion, and I'm like, oh, now they're gonna change their mind. <laughs> well, that's it's interesting that you mentioned that because um, one of the things for people who've played the the game, you understand that you know at any one given time, heroes have to be able to be allies or enemies with any other hero. The heroes, many of them come from the big five houses. Many of them have backgrounds. Some of them are enemies of certain of the five houses. Oh yeah. But but there's but they always have a certain distance from the house it's not yeah we don't want to root anybody said oh this hero they're in they're actually in the house and real active members it's uh our heroes are badass enough to be forces of their own right and right. they're going to work with the houses and the houses will attempt to curry favor with the heroes but uh the heroes have a degree of independence anyway indeed 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 and that's just oh okay that 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 gets me excited because you're not they're not dictated. They can do things like betray. They can anger people. They can. They're, they're held accountable to their right. own actions, whether and not. You know, they're doing uh, spooky things. So it's funny because somebody was like saying spooky in chat, and I love it. I love that like just word with those uh, heroes of the Vedra. Um, so me personally, you could automatically see the difference between these two houses in general. Mm -hmm. If you saw them walking the street, you'd be like, whoa, 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 there's the Vedra. Uh, and that was just to be exciting. Remember, guys, this is all work in progress. This is just what the artists in there, they envisioned. I, I can't say that enough because somebody's going to be like, there it is. There's the final product ship. Well, it. that's the thing is about, that's, again, one of the things that sometimes it's a bit of a culture shock for people who come to Motiga is as a studio, we're not just collaborative. We're relentlessly collaborative. And, uh, and everybody gets a say on in everything and we can get away with that because we're fairly small and independent yeah. and so you know there's there's no good idea that doesn't get better with the reign of a hundred hammer blows uh that and that's so good you should be a writer <laughs> <laughs> oh man yeah well, <laughs> um the uh but uh, this you know the devedra art that you're looking at right now you know this this is early concept art but it wasn't the, you're not looking at the first sketch you're at best looking at the fifth iteration and indeed, indeed, and indeed. that is and you know i'm sure we have you know 3d6 iterations to go <laughs> right right and that's just that gets me excited because this is again i'm showing the building blocks of what's more to come mm -hmm. uh you know what really gets me excited about this devader uh has always talked about magic and they say magic and devader go hand in hand and if you just look at the very principles the very building blocks of starting uh you can see it you can see it um you can see the little emblems you can see the uh what they're kind of going for right. and like you said there's gonna be many many revisions but if the foundation is strong that just means the final project is most normally gonna you know just emphasize that and right. i'm so excited Let's hit that next slide and see the next one. Oh, people are going to get excited about this one. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh, uh -oh. oh i am excited. I'm excited for this one because we haven't talked about this at all. And uh, this is going to be uh, – I'm not even going to try to say this name because people are going to be – I know. Uh, Marius, Marisol is going to come at me and choke me and be like, you said it wrong. I'm like, oh, no. So I stink with names. I stink with pronunciation. But – but oh, the house of Tesserus. Tesserus. Yeah. Is that how you say it? Yeah, Tesserus. Praise the sun, I said it right. Oh, <laughs> man. Oh, okay. There we go. Tesserus. So, you know, this is the house that we really haven't talked about a lot. Um, it's the third house. Somehow it got leaked. Uh, shame on whoever did that one. Shame, shame, shame. And if I'm going to be completely honest with you guys, this isn't a house that has been flushed out a great deal, and we're not going to show you a great deal of flushing out of house Tess Tesserus. But. But, but, but the keen people who have keen eyes and people that kind of kind of delve into it and love to do the theory and lore crafting will be able to see certain similarities and certain little hidden nuggets mm -hmm. uh, about the house of Tesserus. And I do do want to kind of highlight these guys and how different they are from the other two. Sure. If you can see in the photo, a lot of them have tools. They all have wrenches. They almost have that engineering feel to them. I think that's that's the key. Is they are very much a house of invention and. Uh, uh, and engineering. Uh, they're, they're consummate builders and traders. That's T-R-A-D-E-R-S. <laughs> uh, but uh, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't say that they're steampunk, though, for, because there's very little of the sort of Victorian about them. Uh, there's, and <laughs> for them, steam is just one, one thing that they might use, but it's not even a dominant one. But, but in terms of a lot of cogs and gears and things like that absolutely uh i mean you can you can see it in their flag uh mm -hmm. so it's, it's if if you can can conceive of something that is steampunkish without really the punk or the victorian well maybe tesserus is there uh it's 
but there's there's a lot to uh, their sense of commerce too. They are maybe the most mercantile of the five houses, and uh, and yeah. So that's that's a quick overview of what House Tesserus is nice. all about. I'm excited. I'm excited. Um, you know, Tesserus. Uh, you guys seen you guys have seen airships. And we're gonna talk about it this next slide and stuff like that. But uh, they are so mechanical, and they again more and more information to be leaked to you guys. But just showing you the very 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 early concept art of this house that has been talked about in whispers uh and it gets me excited it gets me excited again remember guys the flags the sigils all that thing uh, everything work in progress this is not final but 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 it gets me excited it gets me excited that there's so much variation between the different houses mm -hmm. and it kind of gives them their own identity yep. and I, I can just kind of close my eyes and if i had a vr headset and walk through the streets and i could just see somebody be like hey do you want to buy blah 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 and it's mechanical you feel it in your hand and that gets me really excited but uh if you're a like i know mage like you'd go to this house and stuff like that and you know the city is you know in a constant flux of fighting and they're all kind of keeping their position you know through means of war betrayal all that kind of shenanigans right. and uh it really it really is going to speak to some people right. the mechanical people the people like to build their own pcs and me personally i just think that's cool yeah. and uh it really is going to speak to a lot of people let's hit that next slide up oh right. these are devin's right on yep 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 devin oh Devin's a great guy. I love Devin. Ah, oh, he's so good. Oh, I love Devin. He's uh, he's just he's just a great artist in general. Devin is amazing, guys. Uh, getting to work with him and getting to talk with him. Um, he plays a mean. Uh, he plays just everybody really well. And so, guys, I promise you, we're gonna have Devin on stream. We're gonna talk with him. Where he's gonna he's we're gonna ring out everybody at the office. We're gonna be like, hey, tell me what you know. Uh, and it's gonna be great. I love it. I love it. highlighting you guys' personality and Devin. Just base Devin is just amazing. So, woo -hoo -hoo. so piggybacking on Tesserus. Uh, um, look at all these uh, fancy things. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. So building on the culture, um, Tesserus is definitely responsible for a lot of things you see on the map, uh, or the screen rather. And what I want to show you guys is that if you can put yourself in the seat of what is going on in the game world and you see something like a Skycraft, you want to kind of make that connection with that s singular house. And world building starts from the very beginning, like we are doing now, and we're like we're starting. And eventually, you guys will be able to have like these misnomers, these kind of red flags, like, oh, that is responsible for that. Right. And it starts at the ba basic, guys. And I wanted to show you this screen because we're eventually going to be building a gigantic world, a uh, uh, gigantic world where, you know, it has a lot of rich lore, a lot of rich you know feelings and you, people will be able to immerse themselves in it chris chung said you know gigantic is great it's, it's our product but you know it's just something of a much larger scale and that includes lore and right. me personally so excited so excited for that I, I think one of the great things about seeing the airships in the art here is the airships have been an important part of every gigantic match because that's where you're standing when you start for <laughs> You know, the, for the two years I've been at the studio, and I really love as a storyteller how a simple thing like your respawn point actually helps tell the story and grounds you in the world of Gigantic. It's, you know, we could have had you just respawn on a platform somewhere. <laughs> I think there are some of our technical folks would find that a lot easier than our three <laughs> leaping points. But it was important to us from the very beginning to say at the start of every match and periodically if you're not very good you're going to <laughs> see you're going to wind up on a place that evokes wonder and awe and a little bit of mystery and a little bit of risk and those you know it, those are absolutely part of gigantic's dna and you know why do we respawn on the airship because airships are cool and they're <laughs> magical and you'll never be on one in real life but that's okay because every wednesday night you can log on and jump off the airship as often as thor kills you and, you know <laughs> that ain't a bad gig actually no it's not no it's not at all and uh it's one of those things it's just a small integral part of the puzzle that is going to be expanded on it's going to be worked out and remember guys this is this is the building blocks and yeah. it's going to be so much better and so much work is being put into this gigantic world and i'm excited and uh to me do we have any more slides or is that the last one my friend all right let's get it back to the main camera my friend and kind of wrap <laughs> this up so I'm excited. I'm excited. Yeah, me too. I'm excited. Oh, and it's funny because the community I came for, 
lore was so important. Mm -hmm. And to different people, I understand. Like some people just want to get on, you know, get some frags and get some kills and right. call it a day. Um, personally, I grew up in a setting where uh, I was bullied, and Star Wars books was just my outlet. Yeah. Lore to me was just so important. You know, to me, Chewie and Han are my best friends because right. I grew up reading about that. And when I get to really indulge myself in a great lore, a great story, I get to forget about my problems. I get to forget about you know what I just worked a nine-hour day and something like that. Not saying I don't love my nine-hour days. <laughs> love it, but uh, it to me it's just it's just getting to really know those characters, and I'm just excited, guys. And you no, should I've, be. I'm the same way. I spent all my childhood and all my adolescence, and you know, a good chunk of my professional career in the tabletop RPG industry, which is nothing but collaborative storytelling with enough of a game to just <laughs> provide a little propulsion. And you know, I wouldn't have it any other way. I mean, obviously, Gigantic is a competitive game, and you know, it makes no bones about that. And that's one of the great things about it. It is. It can be really ruthless out there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But. For all of that ruthlessness, it's nice that there is a, a thread of story running through it all. And that over time, as Gigantic comes out and as it continues to grow and evolve after the launch of the fall, you know, that those threads are going to multiply, those story threads are, and they're going to weave together, and we're going to get a pretty cool tapestry of a story when we're all said and done. And uh, to be the guy supplying a lot of the thread, that's a pretty good gig. <laughs> nice, 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 nice. Well, Noonan, my friend, thank you so much for coming on. <laughs> my I pleasure. Really, I really appreciate it. You know, uh, from my standpoint, it's just so important to having you here. It's been an absolute pleasure. I love jamming with you, man. I love right. getting to know it. Anytime. Picking, up, picking <laughs> apart your brain. And guys, uh, there he is, man. There he is. Thank Take you so care, much, everybody. <laughs> Uh, Malcolm, that's actually a good question, and um, that's only one that I'm not going to answer because soon, very, very soon, we're going to be getting into that. Very, very soon. Very, very soon, my friend. Very, very, very soon. So, uh, guys, guys, we made it. We made it. Woo! Oh, I just ripped out all of my questions. Uh, I kind of want to just go through the questions real fast and see if there's any highlights that I can answer by myself. Um, so, a lot of fan sites are gunning. Uh, so, T. Doobie said, a lot of fan sites are gunning for tournaments in the future, even this early on. What would you suggest to someone wanting to get good in the game quick when it launches? That's actually a very, very, very good question. Um, so... I, I'm not afraid to call out really good games and really, you know, just kind of give credit where credit is due. Uh, League, Smite, uh, team-based games out there, TF2, uh, if you want to get better at any game, really understanding the importance of teamwork and getting to know, work on your little Twitch skills. Uh, Gigantic is unique in the fact that there's so many different variables that go into the game. Uh, it's very fast-paced, but it can also be very slow if you pick the right character that kind of fits your play style. Uh, getting to really build those building blocks of teamwork. Teamwork is so important or not detrimental. Like if you, teamwork is very, very important. However, you can do your own thing and you can, you know, you know, let's say back cap or be a really good rogue or a trip rather. A <laughs> rogue is internal. Oh my gosh. Uh, but you can, if you want to play the play style of trip and getting those kills, you can do that. However, teamwork is essential in our game. So if anybody wants to, you know, maybe prepare themselves or just play really good games in general, just kind of focus on teamwork, focus on Twitch skills and focus on, you know, just making yourself a better player in general. So I hope that helps. Hope that helps a little bit. And last question that I want to answer with you guys from Reddit would be, um, here we go. Uh, how's the atmosphere over at Motiga? Electric or tense? This is a really good one. Uh, if I could have Kaboom, uh, Kaboom send me that uh, GIF of the electric and the tense one, that would be amazing. So we're, we'll, we'll hopefully she'll throw that in the chat for you guys. If you guys want to know, uh, you really want to know what it's like here at the office on a day-to-day -day basis, I've got two gifts for you to uh, put. What? <laughs> Sorry, I'm like 20 seconds away. Can you can you put the uh, gifts of you and <laughs> Vince on the stream? Uh, oh gosh. Oh man. Oh man. Well, maybe we'll get that in there. Evan has one too of his crab That is that is that is true. That is true, guys. So. Okay. Oh, no. It's going to be in our Reddit post. All right. So we're going to work on getting that. Um, guys, for everybody that came out today, I want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart. Um, what we're doing here at Motiga is special. Uh, it's going to be my job to really bring to light what everybody here at the studio. There's a lot of unsung heroes. There's our engineers that just plug away, you know, for nine hours and really try to work on the game engine. There's people that just, you know, un unfortunately aren't going to be able to get as much screen time in, but I'm going to try my best to kind of highlight everybody. It's going to be a really sh strange journey. <laughs> I'm going to say that. It's going to be a strange, long journey. But this is the first stepping stones. This is the very first step in a larger world, like Obi-Wan Kenobi once said. And I am excited. We have some of the best community members on the round. Scratch that. We do have the best community members on the round. Throwing it down. 
And I'm just excited for our future, guys. We have a long road ahead of us, but it starts now. And so get excited about it, share it, tweet it. If you want to know more information, please go to our Facebook at GoGigantic.com, uh, or rather, <laughs> oh no, here it comes, uh, GoGigantic.com to sign up for the alpha. Like our Reddit post, uh, like our Reddit post, like our Reddit page, rather, go gigantic Reddit. If you want to find us on our Twitch, make sure you hit that follow button. We'll be live once a week starting now, because that is, boom, once a week. We're going to commit to that. And then, uh, guys, I just want to say from the very uh, bottom of my heart, thank you so much for stopping by. I hope you enjoyed today's stream. We had a Congo line. We had some scotch. We had some interviews. We had a little bit of lore, and it was honestly a pleasure to bring this to you guys. Thank you so much. I hope to see you guys here next stream. I'll keep you guys updated on our Twitter and our Facebook. We got Kaboom for that. She's amazing. She's on top of it like hot butter on a breakfast toast. So anyways, guys, thank you so much for hanging out with us. From the bottom of my heart, again, thank you. Hope you have a great day. Have a great weekend. Be safe, and we'll see you again soon. Play me my outro. Off? Oh, my God. Did he not take... What? <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs>